apart from Atlantis, another lost civilization that is said to have sunk into the sea. Some say that both lands existed on Earth in ancient times and boasted highly advanced civilizations. Each of these lands was located in different places. Atlantis was said to be situated in the Atlantic Ocean, while the other was in the Pacific Ocean. Today, we journey to the heart of one such tale, the lost continent of Mu. The concept of continent of Mu was popularized by James Churchward in the series of books titled The Lost Continent of Mu, first published in 1926. A sequel was released between 1931 and 1935, totaling five books. In The Lost Continent of Mu, Churchward proposed that a continent called Mu was situated in the Pacific Ocean. He claimed that the civilization of Mu began around 70,000 years ago, and that Mu was the source of ancient knowledge, culture, and wisdom that spread to other parts of the world. This theory echoes aspects of the Garden of Eden story, in which the garden serves as the origin of human life. It somewhat resembles the biblical concept of paradise, where humans were created by God on this land or continent. Churchward presented his words on the lost continent of Mu as non-fiction. He believed his findings were based on ancient tablets and texts that he had deciphered, and that evidence he gathered substantiated the existence of an advanced civilization on the lost continent of Mu. Churchward insisted that his research and the information he presented were authentic and not works of fiction. James Churchward was a British author, inventor, and researcher. Born in 1851 in Devon, England, he later moved to the United States and became an American citizen. In the 1870s, he joined the British Army as a soldier and served in one of the British colonies, India. During this time, he met a Hindu priest in a temple who revealed the existence of ancient tablets written by an ancient civilization, the Knuckles, in the Knuckle language. Churchward was deeply fascinated by these tablets, which sparked his curiosity about the civilization that created them. He befriended the Hindu priest, and their bond strengthened over time, leading the priest to initiate Churchward into a secret brotherhood. The priest took Churchward to a hidden location within the temple complex, known only to initiates. Here, Churchward beheld a mysterious tablet inscribed with the long-forgotten Nakal language. At that time, it was said that only three individuals in India could comprehend this ancient tongue, and the priest was one of them. Touched by Churchward's sincere desire to learn, the priest agreed to teach him the lost language. Churchwood spent years mastering the knuckle language. Once proficient, he began to decipher the tablets, revealing a hitherto unknown ancient history. According to Churchwood's interpretation of the tablets, they revealed that the vast land mass named Mu existed many millennia ago. A civilization blossomed on this continent around 50,000 years ago. It thrived for tens of thousands of years and expanded its influence to other parts of the world, ultimately leading to a global civilization, the Mu Empire. As for the location and size of Mu, Churchwood proposed that the lost continent spanned the Pacific Ocean, extending from the Easter Island to Guam. The continent was believed to be approximately 8,000 kilometers from east to west and 5,000 kilometers from north to south. 
Churchward's rationale for this location was the presence of similar ancient symbols, architectural styles, and cultural traits among the regions surrounding the Pacific Ocean. He believed these similarities indicated a common origin in the lost continent of Mu. Churchward described the lost continent of Mu as a vast land mass inhabited with a single, advanced civilization with a population of 64 million people living in seven cities. These people were divided into several tribes, all united under one government and one religion. The ruler of the Mu civilization was referred to as Ra. The name Ra is reminiscent of the ancient Egyptian sun god, a significant deity in Egyptian mythology. As a supreme solar deity, Ra was considered the king of the gods, ruling over the sky, the earth, and the underworld. Although Churchward did not explicitly connect Mu's ruler with Egypt's sun god, the shared name suggests a potential link between the two hinting at the extensive influence of the lost continent of Mu on other ancient civilizations. The world of the lost continent of Mu is said to have had diverse climates and food sources that supported this advanced civilization. The vast landmass of Mu likely experienced a range of weather patterns, leading to an array of ecosystems teeming with life. The resourceful people of Mu would have harnessed their surroundings to cultivate a variety of food sources, from thriving agriculture to the practice of animal husbandry. As we continue to delve into the captivating realm of Mu, we can only imagine the diverse landscapes and rich resources that compose this remarkable land. The resilient people of Mu likely developed innovative ways to nurture their environment ensuring the growth and prosperity of their civilization for generations to come. As the population of Mu continued to flourish, some adventurous individuals embarked on journeys to explore lands beyond their home. Among them was a group who would come to be known as the Maya. These intrepid explorers ventured far and wide, establishing connections with other regions and sharing the knowledge and wisdom they had inherited from their local ancestors. In time, the Maya established their own unique civilization in Central America. They integrated the ancient teachings of the Nakals with their own discoveries and innovations, creating a society that was steeped in sophistication. The Maya developed advanced knowledge in areas such as astronomy, mathematics, and architecture, reflecting the profound influence of their Nakal heritage. Through this narrative, it becomes apparent that the Mu Empire was a highly advanced civilization, boasting remarkable architectural prowess and state-of-the-art navigation technology. As Church would decipher the ancient tablets, he unveiled a tale of cataclysmic events that unfolded around 12,000 years ago. The story depicted a great civilization on the precipice of an apocalyptic disaster, one that would forever alter the course of history. Just in a usual, peaceful day, suddenly, the ground quaked with unimaginable force as the gas-filled chambers beneath the continent collapsed. The earth trembled and split open, while the deafening roars of organic eruptions filled the air. Dark clouds of ash and smoke bloated out the sun, casting a foreboding shadow over the doomed land. In panic, the people of Mu scrambled to protect their loved ones and their homes as colossal waves surged inland. The sea water, once a life-giving force, transformed into an unstoppable, deadly foe, swallowing entire cities and engulfing the land in its icy grasp. As the continent continued to sink, the inhabitants of Mu did not experience the sensation of falling. Instead, they bore witness to the horrifying sight of the sea level rising, 
relentlessly consuming their once great civilization. This catastrophic event may have been the inspiration for the legendary Great Flood chronicled in numerous ancient texts and religious traditions around the world. Following the tragic sinking of the continent of Mu, the survivors who managed to establish colonies in various parts of the world sought to preserve their legacy and mourn the loss of their homeland. In places like the Micronesian Islands, America, and even the far southern parts of Japan, they continued to develop their unique cultures and traditions. One such place is Easter Island, where the Moai statues stand as animatic reminders of the past. Among these Moai sites, Ahua Kivi holds particular significance. The seven Moai statues of Ahua Kivi face westward, towards the ocean, which is unique compared to most other Moai on the island that face inland. It has been suggested that these seven statues, each representing one of the seven major cities of Mu, were built to face the direction of the lost continent, paying homage to their vanished homeland. The astronomical alignment of the statues at Ahua Kivi also hints at the advanced knowledge possessed by the ancient people of Mu. During the equinoxes, the statues face the point on the horizon where the sun sets further supporting the idea that they were built to maintain the connection with the sunken continent. Nanmadol, a ruined sea lane, is located southeast of the largest island of the Federated State of Micronesia, Pompeii Island, where the capital, Parike, is situated. It consists of nearly 100 artificial islands of various sizes, each created by stacking basalt on shallow coral reefs and filling them with sand and coral. Pillar-shaped basalt rocks pile up on the artificial island. The basalt used as a building material is pillar-shaped basalt formed by hexagonal cracks caused by magma cooling rapidly. These pillars, which have a beautiful hexagonal shape that looks as if humans had processed them. In Nanmadol, they are stacked like log houses, which is unique. Each artificial island had its own function and was used as a residence for kings and priests, as well as for bases, ceremonial sites, workshops, and so on. Artificial waterways were built between the islands, and the people are believed to have traveled between them in canoes. The megalithic monuments of Nan Madol were built between the 13th and 16th centuries by the Saudala dynasty, which ruled over the entire island of Pompeii. Many large stones weighing tens of tons were used, but it is still unclear how they were transported from the quarries and how the megalithic structures were built using what kinds of techniques. Could these techniques have been passed on by the descendants of Mu? The Maya civilization, which emerged in the East, is another example of the influence of the ancient people of Mu. With the knowledge and wisdom passed down from their ancestors, the Maya developed a deep understanding of astronomy, mathematics, and architecture. They built impressive structures such as pyramids and observatories, showcasing their advanced skills and the legacy of the lost continent of Mu. In the aftermath of the sinking of Mu, stories of great flood began to emerge in various parts of the world. These accounts can be found in mythologies of Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and the Americas. For instance, the biblical story of Noah's Ark, the Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh, and the Hindu legend of Manu all share striking similarities, describing a catastrophic deluge that wiped out a previous civilization. Another intriguing theory of continent of Mu exists in Okinawa, Japan. Proposed by an emeritus professor of the University of Ryukyu's, Professor Masaaki Kimura. In 1986, 
a local diver encountered a massive temple-like structure 20 meters below sea level of Arakawabana, a cape on the south side of Yonaguni Island. This colossal reef, measuring approximately 60 meters from east to west, 100 meters from north to south, and 25 meters high, appeared to be man-made, with steps, terraces, and drainage channels carved into it, along with holes where large stones seems to have been placed. Also, there was a large stone platform or a monument that resembles a turtle. Surprisingly, reports soon began to emerge about similar artificial-looking objects discovered underwater all over Okinawa. In response, Professor Kimura created a detailed 3D sea chart in 2000 and began to investigate the distribution trends of these underwater ruins throughout Okinawa. His research revealed that the underwater ruins of Yonaguni Island consisted of several processed stone statues, cylindrical holes, stairs, and reliefs. The stairs and terraces were almost right-angled, and a road network was evident. Eventually, he announced that these underwater ruins were remnants of the Mu civilization, suggesting that the continent of Mu was located in Okinawa. Incidentally, between 1967 and 1970, ancient human bones were discovered in the same Okinawa prefecture. Named Minatogawa Man after the location of discovery, these bones were believed to belong to people who lived in Okinawa approximately 20,000 to 22,000 years ago. This time frame aligns with a period when Mu was still above water. Moreover, there is a theory suggesting that the Minatogawa men were not like the Jomon people, the ancient people of Japan, but were closer to the indigenous people of Australia and the ethnic groups of New Guinea. If this is the case, the Minatogawa men might have been individuals who migrated from Mu to Okinawa a long time ago. Some say they were in fact the descendants of the lost continent. Mu. We have tread through the echoes of the lost continent, seen in the magnificent monoliths of Easter Island, the complex structures of Nanmado, the advanced Maya civilization, and the underwater ruins of Yonaguni. We have also felt the whisper of their presence in the remains of the Minatogawa man, possibly the descendants of the people of Mu. Yet, despite the myriad pieces of this puzzle we have explored, the truth about the lost continents of Mu remains shrouded in mystery. Some say it is merely a myth, a figment of our collective imagination. Or some would argue that indeed it was an ancient civilization whose advanced culture and knowledge radiated across the globe. What we do know is that the legacy of Mu, whether real or imagined, serves as a powerful reminder of our world's rich and diverse history. It encourages us to keep probing the depths of our past, to keep asking questions, to keep unraveling the many mysteries that our ancestors have left behind.